Huh. Another giant monkey attack in North America after four years involving a giant Rob the Robot and a Gundam and a witness named Indy Fan. Huh. Oh, oh, uh, I've got a review to finish off. Yeah, uh, sorry, I just I was just reading up some recent news in the meantime. Uh, yeah, uh, what was I talking about? Oh yes, La Folie by the Stranglers. Uh, <clears throat> Side two begins with Pin Up, a ver another very synth-heavy tune that uh, that feels on and sounds like something out of Sparks or Devo. In a good way, of course. The lyrics, of course, seem to be seem to center around a pinup model, one who has the attention of a hundred million glances, with posters and everything about her on many people's walls. So, was this the model that Genesis song "Anything She Does" was about? Possible. Anyway, like I said, this is another very this is another song where Dave Greenfield's synthesizers really dominate the overall sound of it. And it, while it does show the time it was made, it's not entirely a bad thing. It was, a, it was a time where synthesizers were really becoming a thing in popular music in general. And, and keeping with the theme of madness and obsessions with love uh, that the concept of this album was trying to convey, this too seems to seems to express that such a such a specific kind of love, one that is about that one that is from many people's admirations and attractions towards models and and women in magazines and posters and just models in general, be they women, men, or otherwise, and it kind of questions where's the line drawn between admiration for just a picture of an attractive person that you may not know much about and the objectification of that said individual. So it's so it still keeps up with that kind of ambiguity which I still very like. And all in all, this even if you're not a fan of the more more poppy, more keyboard centric stuff, I still think this song is still very fun to listen to regardless. Next is It Only Takes Two to Tango, which is a fact I totally didn't know before. I always thought it took like three or four people to get it right. Anyways, accompanied mostly by faint synths and guitars, as well as a, a thumping drum beat, the lyrics here are quite simple to say the least, much like Non Stop None and Let Me Introduce You to the Family. Uh, here it mentions the dance of tango, of course, but also goes on to say how it also takes two not only to tango, but also to start wars and get to the top of the monkey tree. Now, funny enough, I had to look up if if there actually was such a such a species of tree called monkey tree. And the closest I could find was one native to Chile and Argentina called the Araucaria Araucana, or the Monkey Puzzle Tree, and honestly, I think that might be the might be what the song itself is probably referring to. I don't know if it has any special meaning or symbolism in Chilean or Argentinian culture, or even here in the UK, but I, I have to imagine it must be a pretty tall tree and pretty prickly one to climb onto. That aside, though, the song itself does have a very, have, also has a very tribal feel to it. Of course, being dominated by the drums, but also the the very cheery, bright hyperactiveness of Hugh Cornwell's vocals, kind of almost make almost well making an an audio representation of a tango musical dance. Now. I haven't know I don't I don't know a lot about tango dancing and music associated with it, so I don't know if this kind of music would actually 
match an actual tango dance. So I'd probably leave that to actual experts of tango out there who would probably know better about it than I do. Then we come to the most well-known song of this album, if not the most well-known song of the Stranglers in general. And that song is simply Golden Brown. Uh, no, I said Golden Brown, not Gordon Brown. I can't believe I had to make that obvious joke. But anyways, this is a very memorable track, and with good reason. It's unlike anything I ever heard before or after the song, or even from a new wave punk band like The Stranglers. It's, a, it's, a, it's essentially a Baroque-style piece that's dominated by the recognisable harpsichord, which is a, a very old and yet very famous kind of piano-esque instrument that would pretty much be pretty much be known as one of the first keyboards in a way. Not in exactly an electronic sense, but more in the sense of just using the classic black and white keys, much like grand pianos basically. And and across the song it performs this this very bouncy yet somewhat eerie waltz-like melody. It's like we're riding a gothic merry-go-round. A merry-goth round, if you will. A dreary-go-round, if you will. A dreary-goth round, if you will. And another thing to take note of the song is that it is intentionally and cleverly written in a way that it can refer to two subjects. Golden Brown being referring to either a girl or a drug, specifically heroin. And Hugh Cornwell himself have kind of acknowledged this, saying how it kind of refers to them both, how they, how they, quote, make him feel pleasurable, which I think, of course, still adds to the themes of love and madness, which the La Folie album kind of pretty much establishes up to here, which I think is pretty good. And even with all that side, is honestly no wonder why this became the second and most famous single of this album, if not in the history of this band. It is so distinct, it's it's so familiar and recognizable, and yet it doesn't sound like anything you'd think of if you think if you think of punk rock music or just new wave music in, te in, in general. It's not overtly political, it's not hard or abrasive, it's not too poppy or synthetic either. It just feels, just feels like Gone Brown. It's just, it's a one of a kind. It's a, it's, a, it's just one of those songs that you find really hard to describe, at least in simple words. It's just something you have to listen to, to understand. And I'd, I'd recommend the song, but shots are good, you probably recognize it in some way or another. You probably heard it on the radios sometime, ever since the early 80s, or even in certain movies, like the Guy Ritchie film Snatch, which is also a pretty good film that I recommend. And all in all, Golden Brown is a fantastic song, and with good reason. After that is How to Find True Love and Happiness in the Present Day. Blimey, blimey. Definitely a mouthful of a title. Anyways, this is another synthy tune with a bit of a faux tropical vibe to it, to its keyboard at least. And this song seems to be about a few characters while continuing the themes of madness and love that, again, that runs across most of the songs of the album. This time, one of these being about a man who's in love with money and power, and a woman who's in love with living, 
preferring not to stay around in one place. So could that be a callback to the song Tramp, further evidenting this album as a concept album? Who knows? But anyways, then one day they'd say there's something that's either wrong or something that they never seen before. Then in the chorus, Cornwell himself tells us to tell them how to, well, find true love and happiness in the present day. Seemingly addressing that being rich and powerful or just moving around from one place to another, never really being at home, may not be as fulfilling as one may think, that we need we need true genuine love from people and be, be and, and give love to those other people as well. So not only is it addressing the love for materialistic means and the love of being free and all that, sometimes we need to be with people, we need to care for other people in order to be cared ourselves. So, in a way, it, it does kind of warn us about how empty our lives could be when we've kind of shut out everyone else and just kind of disregard them just for the priority of just being, being well, either, either high at top or just out free in the reality even though it may not be as free and so idealistic as one may seem. It's honestly quite it's honestly a quite bit deep when you think about it. And all this coming from a little quirky little new wave song. And so La Folie ends with well, La Folie. We began the album with the shortest track of it, and then we end it with the longest track at over six minutes no less. A slow yet elegant symphony, emphasis on the synth, and it featuring some weeping guitars and rippling bass, reminding me a bit of Dire Straits or Ultravox. The lyrics this time are sung by the bassist JJ Bunnell or Jean-Jacques Bunnell, entirely in French, which kind of figures since the title itself is French and JJ's parents happen to be French. And across this piece, JJ seems to speak the lyrics here, except when he actually reaches the simple chorus of we say la folie, which he actually kind of sings, albeit in a very, very dry, yet very almost, almost monotone feeling to it, always as if he's drained of some kind of energy. And, and the phrase itself, we say la folie, roughly translates to, yes, it's madness, or literally, yes, it's the madness. Upon and Upon attempting to translate the lyrics as a whole, part of it seems to allude to an actual infamous crime that was committed by a person named Ise Sagawa, who apparently cannibalized a woman earlier that year in 81, and had become something of a notorious celebrity figure for quite some time. And apparently, the reason he did this crime was because of her beauty, apparently, and for a while he was deemed mad, which I guess kind of was kind of part of the inspiration for the title of La Folie, since while he was Japanese and the woman was Dutch, the crime itself took place in France. So I guess in a way it kind of connects in some respect. Another interesting trivia is that that another song, which, which was Tramp, was going to be going to be the third, next and third single from this album after Golden Brown, which was Hugh Cornwell's suggestion. 
However, JJ Bunnell himself suggested that this be the next single, and it kind of backfired in a way. While Golden Brown was at reached the number two at charts, becoming their most highly charted song of stranglers, this barely managed to reach number 47 in the charts. And honestly, don't get me wrong, charts, charts aren't the only sole criteria for any quality of music, but I can understand why it didn't really reach any higher compared to something like Gold, Golden Brown. It's very, it's much longer than the conventional song, and it's much slower, and I can understand if some may see it as, or rather hear it as, anticlimactic, especially after we're having a few energetic songs like Nonstop and the aforementioned Tramp. But honestly, I think after all that, it's still definitely a good song to go out on. It's just not exactly a single song as say something like Tramp or Golden Brown or even Nonstop None. So I consider it more a progressive punk track if that makes any sense to anyone. So that was so while the La Folle song may be good, the La Folle album is honestly kind of excellent in some way. It's it's, it could be considered by some to be the last of the classic Stranglers album before they kind of faded in and out of times. Not to say that the quality of the albums afterwards were bad, it's just they never really reached the success at say Rattus Norwegicus, No More Heroes or even something like this ever managed to reach. This is more, more, this is less a punk record in some way, more of an avant-garde kind of record. There's there's lots of synth here, as well as as well as some mixes of the occasional rock styles and even some cl classical influences, like with the Hasper the Hasper the Hasper chord in Golden Brown. So, while Golden Brown itself is a good tr track in of its, of itself, I've got to give props to the other songs here. For being a, something of a diverse range, going from very slow and serene to being quick and energetic, overall capturing the themes of love and madness that most of the songs here try to convey. So in the end, I highly recommend it and overall, if you like early 80s new wave music, I say give this one a whirl. La Folle is indeed a mad record. Next time though, we take a look at another underrated record from an underrated band from the 80s. And let's just say, we're about to get infected with love.